Welcome back everybody. So up until about two months ago, there was a brand called Equalize or EQLZ that I personally had never heard of, but they recently teamed up with Aaron AC Cooper, famously from Nike, uh, one of their great designers that kind of left Nike and just kind of went out on his own. They teamed up, they partnered up, and they created their first basketball silhouette, uh, the EQLZ or Equalize 247. Um, but before we get into the review of that shoe, um, if you can like and subscribe, I'd be greatly, greatly appreciative. And obviously, commenting all that fun stuff helps get the video into the algorithm. But without further ado, let's get into this review. Starting with the packaging, as we always do, um, the packaging isn't anything crazy. It's nothing to write home about. And obviously, they spent a lot of the marketing and budget on the actual shoe itself. But the packaging itself is just basic, you know, cardboard box with equalize on the box itself um, some words of wisdom and things like that and one nice little touch that they did add that a lot of sneaker boxes don't do other than adidas is they threw a picture of the shoe on the front of the box so amongst all of your sneaker boxes you can identify what is in that specific box i love that touch moving on to the design of the equalize 247 as i said earlier equalize partnered with Aaron A.C. Cooper, who is most famous for his design work with Nike. Um, he's He was a longtime designer with the brand and obviously went out on his own. He is credited as one of the designers for the Nike Air Zoom generation, um, LeBron's first signature shoe, and then obviously and most famously probably for the Nike more up-tempo. But getting this shoe out of the box, you're just greeted with a very, very uh, stark contrast in colors. You have a black and white shoe. Um, and this particular colorway is called the Phantom Zombie colorway. And this one is just met with a black knit upper. And then you have a white, like just a very stark white um, lower part of the shoe. That's the midsole and all that fun stuff. But overall, you're met with a very, very clean design. And if you were just to look at this shoe at first glance, it doesn't look like anything you've ever seen. In my opinion, you can't tell whether it's a Nike or an Adidas or a Reebok or something like that. It really has no branding whatsoever, lateral side, medial side and especially on the outsole. The only place you're gonna see branding is on that heel tab where the little ankle collar is. And you really are going to see Equalize the brand 247, the, uh, the model number of the actual shoe. And then you have Equalize kind of uh, embossed into the heel counter of the shoe. Now, from a materials perspective, um, this is a very, very premium shoe in my opinion. Getting the shoe out of the box, I thought that the mudguard kind of wrap that goes around the whole shoe was a vinyl type of material and come to find out it is genuine leather wrapping around the entire shoe and that should help with stability and kind of containment. Uh, above that, you have a full knit upper, kind of reminiscent of Nike's fly knit and the prime knit from Adidas that you see on the uh, Yeezy shoes. But you have a very premium upper and then you're actually greeted with like a TPU counter on both the lateral and medial sides. And then you have an anatomically correct um, outline of the human foot on the outsole. Um, and we'll get into the traction and all that fun stuff later, but it is a very interesting, intriguing design overall. In general, the materials are fantastic. Now you can't talk about the materials without talking about the weight. This shoe in a size 12 and a half comes in weighing at 17.3 ounces or 492 grams. Um, the shoe isn't the heaviest shoe I've tested. It is not the lightest shoe. Kind of comes in weighing around the same as the LeBron 21, which is um, a pretty decent weight, about average. It still is lighter than, say for instance, the AE1. Moving on to the sizing and fit of the Equalize 247. This is where I ran into one of my only real problems with the shoe and it had more to do with me and the decisions I made at the purchase, which was sizing, than it had to do with the manufacturer. So to be on the safe side, being a little bit too cautious, I went with a size 12 and a half instead of going with my true size 12. Um, and what that meant was I had a bit of room in the toe box and around the shoe in general. And when you have that knit upper, just like with any knit shoe, there is a little give in that shoe and so there was no real containment or lockdown now with that full grain leather um, that wraps the shoe that in theory should keep your foot contained 
But for me, again, going with that 12 and a half, I had quite a bit of room. No matter how tight I tied those shoelaces, I just really couldn't get a good lockdown. Now, you know, it's kind of reminiscent for any of you who played in the LeBron 15 years and years ago, that was another real issue. Unless you were playing in a LeBron PE, which most people weren't, at least normal people, um, you really had an issue with lockdown or your foot slipping off the footbed. There was an extent, or it got to an extent of where I made a cut and my foot slid off the footbed and was literally on the floor. So with the Equalize 247, while it wasn't as bad as a LeBron 15 in terms of lockdown, I really did have a lot of room uh, where I felt, felt my foot sliding around um, the shoe quite a bit. If I'm making a recommendation to anyone, obviously based on my experiences, I'm gonna say easily go with a size 12. Um, if you really want a snug fit, you may even wanna go down a half size from there. For me, I went with a 12 and a half. I'm going to go with a size 12 for my next pair because based on my experiences with this shoe, I definitely want to get another pair. Traction on the Equalize 247 was fantastic. You obviously have that anatomic foot shape on the outsole of the shoe, and in between that, you have what they're calling a shark skin inspired pattern. And it's not necessarily what you're traditionally thinking of a pattern. It's not a herringbone or a radial pattern. It's kind of just nubs all throughout the shoe, but they're kind of like reminiscent of uh, the GT Cut 2 and that splatter pattern that they were using on that modified herringbone. But that outsole, that outline of the human foot is obviously very reminiscent of the PG-5, I believe it is, and obviously the Kobe 9. In practice, they played very, very well. Uh, I had no real issues with slipping. I was playing on a moderately clean court. There was no real slipping. I never really had to wipe the outsole of the shoe. Um, overall, the traction was fantastic. Cushioning on the Equalize 247 was very, very good. It is utilizing a super critical PBAX foam. In my research and just trying to understand PBAX foam, because I've heard it here and there, I know that on the LeBron 3, I believe it was, it was used back then in some way, shape, or form. Obviously, I don't think it was considered uh, Zoom X or came close to what Zoom X is today. Uh, Zoom X itself is a PBAX foam as well, probably proprietary in terms of the chemistry makeup for how Nike uses it. And generally, uh, PBAX foams are usually used, or at least super critical PBAX foams are usually used in runners. But obviously they've adapted it to the Equalize 247. And in my experiences, the shoe was nice and firm, but stable at the same time. It didn't kind of develop a bounce, kind of what I experienced with the uh, Nike GT Cut 3. But PBAX itself is designed or kind of created to have a high energy return. Um, so I think over time, as you play in the Equalize 247, you will develop that bounce that you probably have felt in Zoom X cushioning, whether you're a runner or you played in some uh, basketball shoes from Nike that utilize that PBAX foam. But on the Equalize 247, um, I think over the long term, as you break in that cushioning, you're gonna get that bounce that PBAX is known for. Now, when it comes to my final thoughts on the Equalize 247, you are getting a well-built shoe with premium materials, a great performance, all wrapped up into a $140 price point, which I think is very fair. Um, if you were to get these from a big brand like Nike or Adidas, you're probably gonna spend about $170, $180, but I think they're priced pretty aggressively, and in my opinion, pretty fairly, to get these in everyone's hands. If I am making a recommendation, I highly recommend these shoes, especially at that price point. Again, go true to size. Don't make the mistake I made by going up a half size. And if you really want a snug fit, even go down a half size. But overall, I've enjoyed playing in the shoe. I really do love the look of the shoe. I love how clean it is. I love how it's free of any real logos and things like that. Things that kind of like muddy the shoe up. It's just a very clean, very pure, uh, design for a shoe. But that will just about wrap it up for this video. If there's anything you want to know about the Equalize 247 or if there's anything I missed, please leave a comment. If you like this video, like it. If you didn't like it, dislike it. But if you really, really liked it, hit that subscribe button. Thank you all for watching and you have a great day. Yeah.